Hello folks. Yes, another intro where we are right by a river. Here to explain what that river's significance is. Well, let me just say that out here in the West, rivers are so vital. Water is more important than ever when it's such a dry climate, when it doesn't rain as much, when there are less bodies of water like this river in front of us. So yes, evermore, especially where we are, rivers hold great importance to life here. Not just humans, but all life around us. Everywhere I move, these grasshoppers are jumping away. Startled, maybe. That might be my fault. I might be walking in their direction, in their home. But this is the Yellowstone River. Now, Yellowstone, you might be thinking, National Park? River? What's the difference? Why is this called the Yellowstone River when there's already something called Yellowstone? Well, it actually turns out that Yellowstone National Park is named after this mighty river beside us. The Yellowstone River is a very important river where we are. It spans almost 700 miles. That is a huge distance for just a small little tributary relative to the Missouri River. This will flow from Yellowstone National Park. That's why it is called Yellowstone National Park, because it is pretty much the source of this great river. And it'll flow until it reaches the Missouri River. And then that will go down, touch the Mississippi River, and will flow until it reaches the Gulf of Mexico. Lots of tributaries. Now take a look at this. Do you ever see a river with just cattle doing their own thing? Yeah, that's a cow in the distance. Cow you doing? Yeah, I don't think the cow likes it. Enough with the cow puns. Oh my, I'm wearing red. I am no matador. Hopefully this does not turn into running of the bulls because I am not well equipped for that right now. But anyway, look at that cow over there on an island in the middle of the Yellowstone River. How interesting, imagine that. Imagine where we are. This is such a treasure trove of beauty and splendor. I'm sure the cow agrees. It's chosen this area to feed on the grasses here. The people who founded this area and settled here and developed it into what it is today. That was definitely a fitting description because we are in our 39th state, Montana, the treasure state. Yes, so in this state, once again, culture, long, long history, lots of things to see and do. This is Montana, big sky country as it's also called. And as you can see, yes, indeed, there is a big sky right above us. But anyway, what might you think of? What would come to mind with the state of Montana as we debut right here in the treasure state? Might you think of Montana as yet another state with such beautiful nature? From the mountains to the high plains, to the forests, to even up in the far northwest, glaciers that are here. Might you think of the history of Montana from the Lewis and Clark expeditions that had Montana as a large stretch of the journey, or perhaps the Spanish who came here and called this place Montaña. And of course, long before either of these, you had so many Native American groups like the Cheyenne, the Crow, the Blackfeet, the Kootenai, the Salish peoples, the Lakota, so many Native American groups that were once here in Montana. Some are still here to this day. Of course, Montana had its fair share of Wild West history with the gold rushes and the days of the cattle trades. Yes, Montana is definitely another yeehaw state, I would say. It's a state that here in the modern day, all the rich folk want to visit Montana. Maybe they tell you of them wishing to buy a cottage in the mountains to live out their the rest of their days here in Montana, yes. But yeah, this is Montana, a beautiful state 
with lots to offer. No wonder it's called the Treasure State. We're here in southeast Montana, a region that has its fair share of history. Some good, some bad. This was the center, the hub, of a lot of these skirmishes with the Native Americans. This was the site of Custer's Last Stand, also known as the Battle of Little Bighorn, which to the natives was a great victory. This was the US's major defeat in that war. And uh, even to this day, it's a very big rallying cry among the tribes here. Now who led the US to defeat? General George Custer. And well, his presence here is a reason why people of Southeast Montana call this area Custer Country. Montana, huge state. It's one of the largest in the US, and so you need these regions to divide and identify the various places here. Because there's a lot of places here, a lot of area. Anyway, let's not get caught up in one location. This is a beautiful river, the Yellowstone, but minutes on my camera are swiftly running out. It is a beautiful place. I would love to stay all day along this Yellowstone River. Montana may have the Rocky Mountains as its backbone, but this is definitely the main artery. All these small towns along eastern Montana rely on this river. But there is a whole nother place I want to introduce you all to. Miles City, Montana. It's a small town, around a little more than 8,000 people, but it sure tells a story. And it sure gives us a great impression of Southeast Montana. Miles City, Montana was formed in the aftermath of the Battle of Little Bighorn. Following this humiliating defeat, the U.S. Army set up various forts in eastern Montana to protect westward American travelers and settlers in the hopes that eastern Montana could be settled, which would give the Americans the advantage against the natives. This later turned from general outposts to cattle towns as industries regarding the cattle trade, especially from Texas, a big cattle state, went up to Montana. And these grounds were perfect grazing land for the cattle. And so that's how Miles City got its start. It was a classic tale of an old western town. Yeah, the same old story of the ramshackle, humble beginnings, but the people here who settled Miles City, Montana had that true western grit that a lot of these western cities are founded on. So there's no place better to learn about the Wild West history of not just Miles City, but eastern Montana than the Range Riders Museum, a classic Montana museum for the ages. What a terrific display of early Eastern Montana life. This is the museum to visit if you want a taste of that. It's got an outdoor park too. You walk in, you walk out, you see the different exhibits in various buildings. Like I'm assuming these old wooden things, I'm pretty sure these were just simply transported. But where they were built, from wherever they were, most likely originals. I do think it's about time we check out the downtown of Miles City, Montana. But not before I do a little bit of a memory card change. The time on this memory card's running very scarily low. I don't want to go into the downtown area with like one, two minutes of footage left. So I'll see ya when we get a brand spanking new memory card. So we're now in downtown Miles City. So after the cattle trade steadily declined, the homesteaders, people who ventured west to settle down and live life out west, maybe better economic opportunity, made Miles City into a thriving little city. 
as you can see, it's pretty well kept up. It's a rather historic place. The thing that I notice about this is that, sure, after a hundred plus years of wear and tear, some of the buildings don't look their freshest, and that's natural with any city. But here in Miles City, it's a pretty nice one, to say the least. I mean, we've been to some pretty rough places in this country. Lots of homelessness, trash everywhere, but it's a fairly clean and orderly city. I love it. And yet, at the same time, it retains its charm as this frontier town. You can see the bars named after everything. Montana frontier area, Trails Inn bar, hole in the wall. I mean, who doesn't love the charm that's still here with all the Wild West frontier elements here in the city? Now, if you look on the ground, this may be an ordinary place to put a tree. You can see them on the street ahead. Trees are there, tree not here on this one. But what's interesting is how on something in the middle of this city, you can still find all these symbols, all these strange symbols that look like they're coming out from some, I don't know, secret society, where they have their own secret script. But actually, this is rather the language of the Wild West. Out in the open prairie, where the cattle roam free on these ranges, you need something to figure out whose property the cattle were. So you would have these brands. The environment from which we get our modern brands, and we use the word brand all the time for companies or products or whatever, you would brand cattle with a hot metal brand. It would hurt the cattle, of course, and that's not something I would love to see myself, but it was kind of a necessity out here in the Wild West to imprint these cattle with the brand, such as these, which would represent maybe the family which owned the ranch. And from then on, people could tell by looking at these cattle and livestock who they belong to. And it's nice to see that even in the present day, these are still paid respect to. I do want to emphasize the fact that Miles City had the makings of becoming a huge, important city in Montana today. Unfortunately, that's not the case, largely because Billings came along. Oh, Billings, you are the most populated city in Montana, and you kind of took that away from Miles City. Miles City, at the end of the 1800s, early 1900s, well, for Montana at the time was one of Montana's largest cities. And then slowly but surely, people saw Billings as more productive here in eastern Montana than Miles City. And so that took a lot of the opportunity and potential away from Miles City around us. And now Miles City is just but an afterthought compared to all the cities that have sprung up. Not just Billings, but Bozeman, Butte, Missoula, all of those, especially towards the western part of the state. But it is okay, my old city, at least in the southeast corner of Montana, when there are no real contenders to beat you, you are number one. Like, I'm not even joking when I say my old city is the only piece of substantial civilization for miles and miles and miles. There is just nothing outside of the limits of my old city. Another thing you'll find in Miles City, a prison, yes, that's a prison, Montana Department of Corrections, right next to a Wendy's. Now, it's been a long day of travel, we've been walking a lot, it's getting pretty late into the day, and I'm starting to get hungry. So where should we go to get something to eat? Dairy Queen? No. Pizza Hut? No, not that either. We can find these all over the country. We gotta look for some authentic Montana food. I think I know where to go from here.
how we failed in our mission in Cheyenne to get a bison burger, but here in Miles City, Montana, we have done it. I don't know how else to describe the taste of a bison burger, other than it's like eating a barbecue brisket sandwich. It's really nice. The meat is tender. It tastes different from beef, though. It's so interesting. Oh yes, it's the Black Iron Grill and Rotisserie, which does the great job of serving a mighty fine bison burger. Like in Wyoming, Montana is a state that has many ranches full of both cattle and bison flocking around. So if you're in the mood for a bison burger while you are in Montana, you might as well come to my old city. That's where it's at. Yeah, it's only because of that bison burger that now I have enough energy to do the hour-long walk back to the campground from here. Yes, I've been walking the whole day even to and from the campground. Sometimes you get to do that. Sometimes you're close enough where you're lucky in that the campground you stay at is right next door to the downtown of the city. But anyway, yes, Miles City it is a place that does the Old West the best. Yes, if you are low on gas and have an empty stomach, I suggest don't just take the hour to recharge here. Spend the whole day here. See what's going on from the museum to the beautiful natural sites just outside of the city to the downtown historic center itself. There's plenty to do here, and I'm glad we could debut our adventures here in Montana with this small little city. Small city, big town, doesn't matter. Around this size of population, that's what I personally think is best for a, a day of travel. Not too much, but you're not in the middle of the boonies. But yeah, that's all I can really say about this place. 39 states, unbelievable. If I had an extra digit on one of my fingers, I could count how many states we have left here in the United States on the coverage project. Only 11 states left. And the number's gonna get fewer and fewer and fewer. I can't wait to count down the states we have left here in the United States on our travels with you all here on the coverage project. So with that said, as day begins to wane here in Miles City, more travels to come. I will see you at the next location.